Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come on here first and foremost to wish you guys a really, really happy new year. Happy 2021. Um, we haven't chatted in about a month, so I thought I would give you a quick recap on what's been going on and uh, what my plans are for the future. Spoiler, not a whole lot is set in stone yet. But um, first, my little intro. Hi, welcome. If you're new here, I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is a weight loss surgery back in October of 2016. Um, five foot eight. My high weight starting weight day of surgery at the time was 265. Um, I am now 34 years old. I'm just past four years post-op. I was uh, yeah, living in New Jersey at the time of the surgery in Morristown, New Jersey. I now live back in my hometown of New Orleans. Like I said, I'm about four years post-op. I did reach my goal weight, lowest weight, 14 months post-op. I lost 100 pounds. I weighed 165 for about a day. Um, I maintained in the 170s in year two, and then in the 180s in year three, and then in the 190s in year four, <laughs> and here we are. So, um, and I did post a like four year recap video pretty recently. So if you wanna go back, I'll actually leave the link for that below. If you wanna take a look, I go into like the detail of my first four years uh, a little more thoroughly. But anyway, welcome. Hi, it's been about a month since I checked in. Um, last time we talked, so, two times ago, I was in like a really good new headspace to continue working on my regain. And I just first and foremost want to say that like, this is a thing that never ends. You know, I often get comments about like, why even have weight loss surgery if you have to diet afterwards? <laughs> well, um, weight loss surgery is like a really, really good head start, like a good, boost but you absolutely still have to watch what you eat and live a healthy lifestyle afterwards um, the surgery alone will not make you thin and healthy forever it will help you lose weight quickly for a short amount of time and then you're back on your own so in that short amount of time you need to do your best to maximize the benefits that you get but um, from that point on it's up to you to continue eating healthy and being a healthy person so some people go the keto route, some people go the Weight Watchers route, some people just like eat intuitively, whatever it is that works for you, you have to do it. Um, you have to constantly be vigilant of what you eat and the kind of life that you lead. I think the things that are most important are getting enough sleep and getting enough water, then the food that you eat and the exercise that you do. Um, so anyway, I, found myself in a really good headspace a couple of months ago to tackle my regain. The highest regain point that I saw was like 215 and some change. And uh, last time when I came, into you, came to you, I weighed in at 210, so I was down five pounds. I have not weighed since before the Christmas holidays, so a couple weeks, but I was at 208. So we can say like in the month of, from mid-November to mid-December, I lost two pounds. Um, which doesn't sound like a lot. I certainly wish it had been more, but given the holidays and everything, I think it's a success. Um, when I last talked to you, I was heading on vacation right before Thanksgiving. So um, since then, I went on a really nice vacation. I visited some friends in Arizona. It was just like a, a mental break for me, which was really nice. I just found myself missing my friends. So I was like, why not go visit? <laughs> um, so had a really nice couple of days in Arizona. Then I came back and it was Thanksgiving. Um, and then, you know, just a couple of weeks before all the Christmas celebrations started. So um, it's been since like two weeks before Christmas, just like nonstop uh, parties and events and dinners and people in from out of town. And, you know, I've been doing my best to eat appropriately. You know, a lot of times you just can't eat what you want and um, that's not an excuse but uh, if someone has invited you over to their home for dinner and they made pasta you're you're gonna eat pasta right even if you don't want to so um, that's only happened a few times usually if we're going to like a big event party or whatever there are multiple food options or if we're going to a restaurant there are multiple food options so for the most part I've been able to stay on track in terms of what I'm eating but what is tough for me and has always been tough for me is portion control. Um, being four years post-op, I don't feel the amount of restriction I felt immediately after surgery. I can eat 
what I consider to be like a normal portion size, what I see like a normal healthy adult portion to be. <laughs> and I always use my husband as a reference point here. He's like normal adult healthy sized. Um, I cannot eat as much as I was eating before surgery. I definitely feel like uncomfortably full after a point, but I'm also not eating like, you know, teeny tiny portions either. So. Um, that's hard for me because I do get full, but then if I just wait a few minutes, I can eat again. So it's very much a mental thing to not do that. And so I've been trying my best to like eat the right things because those keep me satiated for longer. So if I stick to meats and fattier cuts of meat, if possible, that just makes me feel full for longer. Um, I find that when I eat carby foods, if I'm eating chips, if I'm eating popcorn, if I'm eating bread, they don't make me feel full and certainly for not a long amount of time. So I try to avoid those foods because to, in a sense they're like empty calories for me. They're, you know, some people call them slider foods or whatever. So um, I try to stick to meat, eggs, protein, fattier cuts of all those things. And for the most part, it's been okay. Like I said, I haven't weighed since before the Christmas stuff started, but I did lose two pounds. Um, so I feel like I'm in a good space. And honestly, since the Christmas stuff started, I stopped wearing my Fitbit. I was in um, a step, step bet challenge where I had to get a certain number of steps every day. And um, when I do those, those are usually, I think, six weeks long. When I do those, I find myself like becoming very like obsessively attached to the tracker and I always enjoy taking it off for a little while afterwards. So um, I haven't worn it. It's, it's actually sitting right in front of me on the charger. I haven't worn it in like two or three weeks. And um, because of, because like when I stopped tracking and I know some people hate tracking and it just doesn't work for them. It feels restrictive. To me, when I'm not tracking, I feel very out of control. Um, I, <laughs> I just don't know what's going on in my life. So I am very much looking forward to, tonight I'm putting my Fitbit back on to make sure I get enough sleep. Like I said earlier, to me, sleep is the number one most important thing that you can do for your health, whether or not you're overweight, whether or not you're struggling with other things, whether or not you like have a lot of weight to lose or no weight to lose, or you just have any other issues, I feel like sleep is the number one most important factor. So I try to get at least seven hours of sleep per night and I use my Fitbit to track that and I haven't worn it in a while. And because I'm like kind of on vacation and like there's all this stuff going on. Like if, if I didn't, if I didn't force myself to get seven hours of sleep, I would stay up late every night because it's like fun and there's things to do. And my like to do list is endless. And you know, we just bought a house and like, I still have to unpack some boxes and you know, I like not feeling bound by like a certain bedtime, but guess what? I'm still waking up early every day because my like natural body rhythms do that. And um, also because I have obligations in the mornings. So um, I haven't been getting enough sleep. So I am looking forward to putting my Fitbit back on, uh, which will hold me accountable to getting enough sleep. Um, also, I, I just haven't been drinking enough water these last couple of weeks. Um, you know, normally when like there aren't parties and things happening, I'm very diligent about getting at least three to four bottles of water and the bottles that I use are 24 ounces. Um, but lately I feel like I've only been getting one, if that, and that's no good either. So sleep and water are the things that are very easy for me to come back to that I actually miss. And then, um, I'm going to come back to tracking my food and, um, you know, exercise has not really changed for me. I've been pretty diligent about continuing my exercise and I, that's just something that I enjoy. So it doesn't feel like a chore, you know, but, um, yeah, I, it's been, I don't know, two weeks, whatever, since Christmas stuff started. And I just feel like I'm so ready <laughs> to get back to normal. Um, because my schedule has been out of whack. My water, my sleep has been out of whack and that trickles down to like everything else in my life. So, um, today we had like a new year's day party at my husband's aunt's house. And after today, uh, I have a little bit of a break. Now, if you're familiar with like culture in Louisiana and new Orleans specifically, you know, that Christmas lasts until January 6th. That is King's day or the epiphany. Um, and, uh, on January 6th is when like Mardi Gras or carnival season starts, which runs until Ash Wednesday or the day before Ash Wednesday, which is Fat Tuesday. So um, in New Orleans specifically, right after New Year's, you have like king cake season <laughs> um, effectively, which starts on January 6th and rolls until Mardi Gras. 
Mardi Gras is early this year. It's February 11th or something like that. So it's not long. Sometimes Mardi Gras is not until March, depending on where Easter falls. And then Ash Wednesday is 40 days before that. And then Mardi Gras is the day before that, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, so there's a big like king cake party happening on the 6th. I'm done. Like I'm done with all the parties. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of just like unplanned eating and like, you know, I just don't feel well. Like physically, I don't feel my best. Also, when I don't eat properly, I don't sleep properly. I don't drink my water enough. I feel lethargic throughout the day. And then I feel like I haven't done anything, which makes me want to stay up at night. You know, it all, like I said, it all just kind of trickles back down. So, um, I mean, we'll be attending the king cake party, but I'm not going to let that like <laughs> snowball into like a whole season of king cakes. I just can't. <laughs> I'm done. I'm so done with uh, being off track. So I'm actually like really excited and looking forward to just getting back to normal, getting back to normal life, um, eating and, and sleeping and drinking properly. So uh, that is my plan in terms of like big plans for 2021. Honestly, like I feel like this is the first year in a while that I haven't had like a big life goal um, to work on or to look forward to, you know, in the last... I don't know, several, 2016, I prepared for my surgery. 2017, I lost weight. <laughs> 2018, I trained for an Ironman. 2019, I got a promotion and was able to start working remotely. So I moved back home from New Jersey to New Orleans. 2020, we bought a house and have been working very diligent, diligently on that. 2021, and like all of those were things that I had planned like at least a year in advance, you know? If you actually go back on my channel and look at my like New Year's videos, it is very much like written in the star, not written in the stars, planned in advance by me <laughs> that that is what I was going to do that year. Um, but this year I don't have anything like that because it's just really hard for me to envision how life is going to be this year. Um, I do want to go back to Mexico. If you don't know, uh, my family lives in Mexico and we were spending like three months in New Orleans, three months in Mexico, just kind of back and forth because I'm able to work remotely. But, um, all the COVID stuff, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to go back. So it's just hard for me to like visualize the year. And I'm very much the kind of person that like, if I can't picture something, I can't do it. Um, so uh, a couple small things that I do know are happening. I'm having LASIK eye surgery very soon in two and a half weeks from now. I'm so excited about that. Um, it's not something I've really talked about on this channel very much, but uh, my eyesight is terrible. I started wearing glasses when I was eight years old and my vision has progressively gotten worse since I'm now 34. Um, and I was never a candidate for LASIK because my prescription was always changing. Um, I think it has to be stable for like two or three years before they really let you consider the surgery. And only three years ago did it stop changing. So um, finally biting the bullet, I'm going to do it. I'm pretty nervous about it because it's like your eyesight and like if something goes wrong, <laughs> it can really impact your life. But um, every single person I've talked, I mean, it's such a common surgery and every single person I've talked to has, uh, has said it's like the best thing they've ever done for themselves. So I'm excited. I'm going to stop watching surgery videos <laughs> because if you watch how they do LASIK, it's like, oh God. Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm going to do that. So that's why I'm wearing my glasses today. And I can't wear contacts again until the surgery. So I like threw out my last pair of contacts and maybe fingers crossed, I might never have to wear contacts again in my life, which I, it's just like, I say it now and I'm excited, but I actually can't imagine what life would be like to be able to see. I mean, my prescription is so bad. Like, I mean, without my glasses, I have to be like this, but what is this? Like six inches maybe from something to be able to see it clearly. Otherwise it is super, super blurry. Um, my prescription's like 675 in both eyes with astigmatism and whatever. So I'm so excited. So that's in January, um, February. I mean, Mardi Gras is not happening in New Orleans. So I don't know what's going to happen in February. Uh, early March, I think we're going skiing with some friends and uh, that's it. I really don't have like, plans for the rest of the year. You know, in July, we usually like to take a bigger trip with my mom to celebrate her birthday. Uh, in 2020, we were not able to do that because of COVID. We just did a small trip to Nashville, but um, I'd love to go to Europe again and take her on like a little river cruise. That was the plan for 2020, but it got canceled. So if we're able to do that in 2021, we're thinking about doing a, um, a trip to Austria and Hungary, but who knows? Like, it's just, it's hard for me to like 
pan out how uh, picture how the rest of the year is going to pan out. So obviously I will keep you posted and um, oh, I'm doing the uh, Keto Connect is doing this uh, challenge. It's 20 under no 30 under 20, 30 days under 20 net carbs. I mean, if I just go back to the way I normally eat, I'm always under 20 net carbs anyway, so it's not going to be a like, challenge for me, but I am going to be posting all of my food every day on Instagram for 30 days, so if you want to follow me below, uh, my link is below. I will be showing what I eat every single day, and um, maybe I'll do another what I eat in a day video here soon. I feel like those are boring because I always eat the same things, but you guys seem to like them, so... I might do another one, but you know, in the coming weeks or whatever. But if you're interested in seeing what I eat every single day, I am going to go back to tracking on my fitness pal, which is linked below. My diary is open, so you can add me there. Um, and I am going to show all of my food for 30 days on Instagram, which again, I think would be boring for some people, but some people seem to really like it. So whatever. Um, <laughs> if you care to join us, I will also link. They, they like, if you sign up for their challenge, it's free, but they send you some like materials or whatever. So. Um, if you are just starting out with any kind of health or wellness journey or exercise or any kind of goals, I just want to say like, that is so freaking awesome. I'm so excited for you. Um, everybody starts somewhere and there's nothing wrong with starting on January 1st or January 4th because it's the first Monday or whenever the heck you want. Like if you were starting something new, whenever you were watching this, I am so proud of you. Every single one of you has it in you to make a change in your life for the better and, um, you know, if that's what you're here to see me do, I can do it too. I know I ha I can, I have done it before. And uh, I just, I posted something recently that, that I saw and really made me think. It says like, there is no before or after, there is only during. And that really resonated with me because, um, you know, it's this thing, I've said this so many times, but like our lives are so long. <laughs> there is no end to this. You will always, always keep working at it, whether you've had surgery or not, if you're just trying to lose weight, whatever it is, like you have to keep working at it for the rest of your life. So that's something to think about. And um, if you are just getting started, I'm so excited for you. Keep up the great work and I will check in with you soon.